Good evening, everyone. How are you? Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. How are you, everyone? Happy Monday. Happy beginning of the week. This is our last. <laughs> this is our last week together, guys. Then you will have Monday and Tuesday next week, and then you finish on Tuesday. All right. So let's see. For the ones that didn't come on, well, that were as listeners on Friday, or that maybe you couldn't be the whole class on Friday, um, we're going to begin doing a review. Okay, a brief review. We were talking about who remembers what we were talking about on Friday. Let's see. Don't fight people. <laughs> what were we talking about on Friday? About the digital marketing? <laughs> yes, that is one of the topics we saw. Basically, the topic we were we started seeing was uh, tag questions. Okay, mm -hmm. we started if if it comes to grammar, we started talking about tag questions. But then also, as Christian mentioned, we were discussing topics like digital marketing, web designer, content managers, right? That's we. Yeah, that was on Friday. That was specifically on Friday. Because that is a <clears throat> I remember people. I don't remember more than two days <laughs> back from back in my life, okay? All right, but before, before we begin, we have the random question of the day, okay? And this is, I'm going to read it to you guys. And I want you to think this, this is, this has to be a creative answer, okay? So it says, what are the best ways to become rich? What are the best ways to become rich in your opinion, guys? Uh, I consider I will reach if I win the lottery. Okay, so you consider buying the lottery is one way to become rich. I think so too. <laughs> the only problem is that you have to buy a lot of lottery before you become rich. Do you guys uh, know somebody who won the lottery? Do you know a person that has won the lottery? Actually, teacher, I I win, I won the lottery. Uh, the price was ten thousand. Okay. But I just both two two tickets oh so you got like yeah. two thousand right you, no, I, like I, a thousand one thousand mm -hmm. and they did they did they discount the ten percent in taxes uh, the taxes i had to to pay the taxes wow that's the moment when you think i should have bought the complete number <laughs> But you Definitely. are, uh -huh. but uh, I I was thinking that that can be happen, but mm -hmm. you don't have to meet someone. You are that again. someone. <laughs> you are that, that person. Mm -hmm. That That's was three or four years ago. Okay, I met once. I met. A friend that his family won the one hundred seventy-five thousand prize. They won it, and I was like, "So yeah. it really happens." <laughs> I never knew that anyone that that had won it. But he said his father. It's a crazy story because he said his father didn't have any money that day. He only had twenty-five dollars, which is the price for the full ticket, right? And then. The seller was like, I have this one reserved especially for you. And he was like, mm, do I take money to my home or do I buy the lottery? <laughs> and he decided to buy the lottery. <laughs> but he got lucky and they won the big prize. It's a they difficult decision. <laughs> yeah. <but laughs> he was, I think he got lucky. I think he got lucky. Thank you for sharing, honey. What about the others? What are some ways that you can become rich in your opinion? Let me hear you guys. 
ideas that you have for people to become rich? I think means that one of the secrets that the uh, for the way to be rich is um, to save money and don't. Um, I I don't remember how do you say that stuff. Spend. No, or waste. Uh, uh, waste. Okay. Uh, don't waste money in in things that you really don't need. Uh, I I know uh, some people that they are rich uh -huh. and, and they are very tacaños. Selfish. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, stingy. So, stingy sería la, para tacaños. Stingy. Stingy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that is one of the secrets that the that did that people have a lot of money. Well, that's true. You know, oh, yeah. I saw a movie one time. There were two friends, two girls, and they were friends, right? And they were like best friends. And only one of them, every time they went out to parties to the disco, every time they went out. Only one of them used to pay. She was always paying for both of them, right? And when they, the other friend, the one that never paid, invited her to her house. And when she found, when she went to her house, she discovered that her friend was rich. And she told her, I never knew that you were rich. You never told me. And I have been paying everything every time we go out since we know each other. <laughs> And the other girl told her, well, yes. How do you think I am rich? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, that's that goes, true. How do you think I stay rich? <laughs> she doesn't yeah, pay for that's what happened. I, mm -hmm. I read I read recently, teacher, that mm -hmm. uh, several of the millionaires uh, they wake up 4 a.m. in the morning every day. That is oh, the God. the common factor. They have it. <laughs> <laughs> they have it. I wish I could have. Rate? I don't know. You know, I suppose if they wake up early, it's because they have something to do. If I wake up early, I literally have nothing to do at that time. <laughs> <laughs> I would go back to sleep. <laughs> so you need to, to have something to do. Yeah, actually, I have to read a book and I haven't finished it. And my boss is going to ask me one of these days. <laughs> so I will let you know how it goes, guys. <laughs> Uh, All right. Do you, do you read books about how to be rich? John? Mm, no, not about how to be rich, but this book he gave me, it's called Atomic Habits. It's about changing your habits. Um, okay. Yeah, like, because some people, they, they have trouble living the bad behavior, right? Bad habits. So mm -hmm. this book says that it's better to start little by little like minor changes and then you go getting used to getting used to and so on he also says that for example if you have a goal whatever is your goal don't think about the finish of the goal don't think about the end of the goal think about seeing yourself as that forever for example don't think about learning english and when i learn english that's the end of it instead you have to think of, of yourself like you are bilingual, okay? Don't think about when I finish learning English, think as yourself as you are already bilingual so that you're, it starts changing your brain. It's short term. It's for, it's for long term. It's for a long term, that's what he says. Instead of creating short term habits, create long term, not habits, but thoughts. Like think or believe that you are bilingual instead of thinking that you are learning English, right? That way it becomes easier for you guys to communicate and to learn it, okay? So that's one tip I can give you from the book. That's the only part I have read <laughs> so far. Okay, so we're gonna begin with the review for tag questions we were seeing on Friday. I'm gonna share the screen with you guys. And remember, we mostly are going to use tag questions when we want confirmation of something, right? Or when we want also reaffirmation, reaffirmation about something, that's another scenario, right? 
So I'm going to need someone to help me read this portion again, please. And then another person to help me read this. Um, Christian, help me with the beginning, please, with the introduction. And then Jorge, help me with the sentence pattern and the examples, please. Okay. That questions. Introduction. A tag question is a small question that is attached or tagged to the end of a sentence. Rather than repeat the main verb, a form of be or other auxiliary verb or modal is used in the tag. Below are a few examples. Uh, you came by train, didn't you? You came by train, didn't you? It's very windy today, isn't it? You can meet me at the station, can't you? You couldn't give me a ride, could you? Very yeah, good. Thank you. Okay, before we read um hot his portion, we're gonna we're gonna explain this. What Christia just read, we're gonna we're gonna explain it with an example. All right. Um, think about a sentence in real life in which you may or may not need confirmation. For example, I want to say Christia, right? Christia and Christia was supposed to plan the party for the end of the year in the company, right? Christia, you planned the end of the year party, right? The end of year party. That would be the main sentence. And I need her to confirm to me if she did or if she did not, right? So remember in past, if I had, this is an affirmative sentence. So if I want to ask when the tag question is created, I'm gonna change it to negative, right? And for a negative in past, I need to use auxiliary did, did, right? In negative, so it would be didn't you? So I'm going to check with Christia. Christia, you planned the end of the year party, didn't you? And she can be, yes, I did. No, I didn't. It was not my responsibility, right? Whichever of the two questions. The idea of the tag question, this part, didn't you? As a tag question, the idea is that you don't have to repeat all of the main sentence. You don't have to say, Christia, you planned the end of the year party. Didn't you plan the end of the year party? <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Instead of repeating everything again, you just create a tag question using an auxiliary, right? That's basically the purpose of the tag questions. That when you need to confirm something or to reaffirm something, you don't have to repeat all of the sentence completely again, right? Is that part clear? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. So we're going to continue reading the next section. Give me one moment. OK, Jorge, please. Sentence pattern. If the sentence is negative, the tag is usually positive, as in the example below. You didn't tell him, did you? Note, sentences with negative words are considered to be negative. Therefore, they require posi positive tag questions ending. And in these examples, he never drinks alcohol, does he? Nobody left a message, did they? If the sentence is positive, the tag is usually negative, as the next example. You told him, did you? Didn't you? Didn't you? Correct. Thank you, Jorge. Okay. So, sentence pattern, el patrón que va a llevar la oración, right? If we got a negative sentence, I'm going to create the tag question using affirmative auxiliary, right? But there are some sentences that they are negative even though they don't have a negative auxiliary, okay? And those are the sentences that include words like never, nobody, no one, nothing. All those sentences that begin with those, that include those words, even though they don't use a negative auxiliary, they are negative sentences, right? For example, he never drinks alcohol. If you pay attention, there is not an auxiliary, a negative auxiliary, right? No hay ningún auxiliar negativo en esa oración. 
However, it is considered negative because it has the word never, similar with nobody. So when it see when you see any word like that, never, nobody, no one, nothing, you can be sure that is the same as scenario. Okay, you will create the type question in positive. Okay, an affirmative sentence, an affirmative auxiliary to create the tag question, okay? So there are two scenarios, when you have a negative auxiliary and when you have a negative word, the tag question will be positive or affirmative, right? And vice versa, vice versa to the other side, the same, if the sentence is positive, you will create your tag question in negative the way we did it, right? Again, if you see it in affirmative, you obviously are not going to see an auxiliary. But when you create the tag, you require an auxiliary to make it negative, right? Questions until this part? Is, this, is it clear up to this part? Just to be clear, teacher, when, mm -hmm. when the sentence is positive, the question is negative. Mm -hmm. Correct. In general. Yes, that's in general. Do you have to be careful with some exceptions? Mm -hmm. For the exceptions, we're going to check the rules, okay? There are some exceptions because, for example, if you see it didn't here, you assume automatically that you will use it here, right? It did. But there are some exceptions, and those are the ones we will see in a moment. But generally speaking, yes, I do. If you have a affirmative sentence, that question is negative. If you have a negative sentence, that question is affirmative. Okay? Just, you just have to be very careful or pay a lot of attention depending on what tense is being used. Because if it's present, I will you do or does, right? Or don't or doesn't. If it's past, it would be didn't, right? But then also with the verb to be. If it's present, it can be am, is, or are. And if it was in past, was, or where, right? So just to be careful that the tag question has to be in the same tense that the main sentence, okay? I cannot make it a um, simple present and the question in simple past. That's not possible, right? It has to be the same tense. So let's begin checking the rules. These rules are more like special exceptions rules, all right? So we're ha we need 12, well, there are 12, so we need six people. Each person is going to read two rules, okay? And we're going to explain them and we're going to make exercises with them. Um, so I need six volunteers to read, please. Manuel, help me with number one and number two. Jorge, number three and number four. Christian, number five and number six, please. And I need three more people, please. I need three more volunteers to read. Raise your hands so I can assign you the sentences. Wendy, you can help me with number six, number seven and number eight. Wendy, number seven and number eight, please. Okay. Tatiana, are you there? Are you there, Tatiana? Or if not, we can ask. Or Anna, please. Anna, help me with number nine and number 10. And... I didn't hear Tatiana, so I'm gonna ask Claudia if you are if you are able to hear me, Claudia. You help me with number eleven and number twelve, please. Can you hear me, Claudia? Are you there, Claudia? Yeah, teacher. <laughs> Thank you. All right, eleven and twelve will be yours, Claudia. Let's begin, Manuel, please. Okay. Rules and example. After let's the tag begins going show. Example, let's invite the neighbors over for dinner on the weekend. Shall we? Mm -hmm. Use aren't I in tag to mean I am not. I'm not, I'm on time. Aren't I? Correct. 
and um on time um um in um i incorrect very good Manuel. thank you okay let's begin with rule number one if i have a sentence that includes the word let's my tag question will be shall we okay <clears throat> any sentence uh, that begins with let's the tag question will be shall, shall we, we? Shall okay, porque let's es let us, abreviado, ¿verdad? Let us. So ya es ya en plural nosotros, let us. Let us invite the neighbors, shall we? Okay. And then for the sentences that include first person, primera persona yo, right? If I have a sentence in first person, for example, I am on time. I am on time. First person am. The question has to be aren't I. Sí o sí, tiene que ser aren't I si la oración es en primera persona yo, right? In this scenario specifically in present, right? No voy a, um, un escenario bien común es que decimos, I am on time, am I not? And that is not the right way. The right way would be aren't I, okay? I am on time, aren't I? So I want you to make two sentences. Van a hacer una con let's y una con primera persona am, right? And create the tag question accordingly. So you're gonna create two sentences ahorita. Una con let's y su tag. Y una con first person I am y su tag. You have two minutes. You have two more minutes. A las 25 les voy a empezar a, a pedir las oraciones. Voy a iniciar con los que están abajo en la lista de participación. Así que, please be ready. Okay, let's begin with the ones that are far down on the list. Silvia Suleyma, let me hear your sentences, please. Silvia Suleyma, are you there? Hi, teacher. Hi, Silvia. Um, good evening, I don't finish. Um, okay, I'm gonna give you guys Two more minutes. Le voy a dar dos minutos a las 27. Please be ready. How, 
how many sentences uh, I'm going to, to write? Two, Manuel. One with shall we and one with aren't I. Okay. If you have it, you can let me read, hear it. Okay, okay. I can't teach you. Okay. Let me hear them. Uh, the number one, let the people decide the color of the wall. Shall we? Again, Harsha, please. Let the people decide the color of the wall. Shall we? Mm, with uh, the word the people, porque let's es, es, es como nosotros. Nosotros mm. hagamos, ajá. Entonces, without, la, without the word the people, solo let's decide. Ya está diciendo, decidamos nosotros. Ok. Uh -huh. Again. Ok, let's, let's decide the color of the wall. Shall we? Very good. Correct. Cristia, please. Let's go to run in the morning. Shall we? Correct. <laughs> Very good, guys. Um, do you have the one with R and I, Jorge? Uh, I am. I am, I am the best offer, aren't I? Very good, Christian? I'm cooking now, aren't I? Perfect, very good. And if you notice, Christian used it in present progressive, but because she included the verb to be in first person, I am, it's valid to ask, aren't I? Very good, Christian. When did you have your sentences? Uh, let's go to home. Shall we? Very good, Wendy. I take my dinner, aren't I? Um, el aren't I es solo con el I am, Wendy. Verbo to be, en primera persona, I am. Sí, se lo estaba leyendo. Léala de nuevo, por favor. I'm o oh, I am take my dinner. Ah, pero le falta algo al verbo. Al verbo take, ¿qué le falta, Wendy? Oh, sorry. Um, para hacerlo progresivo. Taking. Uh -huh. I am taking. No puedo usar el verbo to be con verbo de acción a menos que sea progresivo. Okay. Uh -huh. De ahí, very good, Wendy. Thank you. Ana Raquel, do you have your sentences? Yes. Eh, the first. Uh -huh. Okay. Let's go to into to the apartment, shall we? Nice. Uh -huh. And the second, I am hungry. Aren't you? <laughs> um, am I? Aren't I? Porque fue la primera persona. En vez de aren't you, aren't I? Oh, okay. Uh -huh. I am. Aren't I? Ese es la, la, oh. el tag que va para eso. All right. Very good. Thank you. Um, Sylvia, are you ready with your sentences? Are you ready, Cynthia? She disappeared. <laughs> okay, Mario Vieda, are you ready with your sentences? Or did you just come in, Mario? Juan de Dios, are you ready with your sentences? Oh, teacher, I am still working. Oh, okay. No worries then. In your case, don't worry. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Thank you. Let's see. Norma, I saw you were driving. Are you still driving, Norma? If you are driving, don't worry. <laughs> okay, let's continue. We have rule number three and number four. Um, Cristia or oh, Jorge, who was it? Me, teacher. Okay. Use one for polite request tags. For example, you bring you bring the other things. One thing. Number four, use will or will with imperative sentence command. Wait, wait there until I return. Will you? Wait here until I return. Will you? Very good, thank you. Okay, so 
for polite requests. When we need to ask something out of someone, we will use the version in negative, okay? Cuando queremos comprometer a alguien a que haga algo o pedirle que haga algo, diciéndole lo vas a hacer, ¿verdad? That's the one where we will use simple, um, simple future using will, and the tag question will be in negative, won't, okay? For example, Wendy, you will buy the cake for the party, won't you, right? Wendy, you will buy the cake for the party, won't you? Ahí básicamente, les, aun si ella no se había comprometido a hacerlo, ella lo va a hacer porque se lo estoy pidiendo, right? So when you are asking something from someone, you can use that technique. You can use tag questions, all right? And usually people will say two things can happen. No, I'm not gonna do it. Oh yes, don't worry, I can do it, <laughs> right? And then the second scenario, will or would for imperative sentences. What are imperative sentences? They are orders. Cuando usted da órdenes, right? Cuando usted específicamente hace esto, que se haga esto, you can use will or would in the tag question to make it sound a little bit softer, okay? No es lo mismo que yo le diga, wait here until I return, a que le diga, wait here until I return, will you? Okay? So in this case, the will or would, you can use whichever you prefer. It will help you to sound less strong, right? It will help you to soften the order. Que suene más suave la orden que se está dando, right? So let's make two sentences. Let's make one sentence using will and the tag want, and then let's make another one for an order. And like I said, dan una orden. Y pueden usar will you or would you, okay? I'm going to give you three minutes hasta las 35. If you have your sentences ready, let me know. He will do the homework, won't, we, won't he? Correct. Mm -hmm. I have one teacher, but I'm okay. not sure. Uh, you will study for the exam, won't you? That is correct. You are ordering them, you're asking them to do it, right? When you say a, set, a positive sentence and you use the tag question, you are asking them to do it, right? Even if they are not supposed to or they don't want to, but if you ask it like that, usually people do the things that you tell them. Okay. Um, the tense hmm? of the verb, study. 
it has to be in in, in base form because you're using the auxiliary will. You will okay. study. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wendy, do you have your sentences? One sentence. That okay. Will. Okay. You will drink only water, won't you? Very good, Wendy. Nice. Anna, do you have your sentence? Okay. Okay, okay no worries. Um, Manuel, do you have your sentence? Yes, teacher. Okay, let me hear it, please. They will cut the grass. Won't they? Very good, Manuel. Correct. Do you have the other one? Yes, uh, in the other. Uh, you have to make the cleaning for tomorrow. Would you? Very good. <laughs> nice. In that case, affirmative sentence in present, but you are using auxiliary will or would to confirm orders, right? Or commands. Very good. Let's move forward. Let's read sentence number, rule number five and number six, please. Okay. Use must end with the model must. Example, this must be the address, mustn't it? And six, two endings are possible when have is the main verb of the sentence. Example, you have enough money, haven't you? This is the British English. And for the other, you have enough money, don't you? Is the North American English. Very good, Christia, thank you. Okay. For any sentence that you include the auxiliary mass, you will create a tag question with mustn't. When do I use must in a sentence? When something is an obligation, right? Cuando algo es obligación, que sí o sí se debe hacer, debe pasar, ocupo must, right? For example, I can say, we must finish the exam tonight. Mustn't we? Okay. Whenever I use must in a sentence, mustn't is the tag question. Solo le voy a cambiar el sujeto, right? Si les digo, por ejemplo, we must study tonight, mustn't we, right? I just change it accordingly. And then, number six, Christia told us, si la oración principal tiene el verbo have, you have two possible tag questions. Puede ocupar el mismo haven't, versión negativa, o puede utilizar el auxiliar de simple present, que sería don't or doesn't, ¿verdad? Dependiendo. Si aquí dijera, she has enough money en persona a persona, usted puede decir, hasn't she, o puede decir, doesn't she, right? This is up to you. Ustedes escogen. La versión más común es la americana. La que se van a encontrar el 90% de las veces es la americana. Right? So, let's do the same. Let's create two sentences. Escribamos dos oraciones. Una con más y el tag mustn't y el sujeto de acuerdo. Y luego una oración con el verbo have. Y ustedes deciden si la tag la hacen con haven't o con don't o doesn't. You have three minutes.
I have one teacher. Okay, let me hear it. Uh, you, you must wake up at 3 a.m. Mustn't it? Mm, I meant the it, sería cual sujeto? Mustn't you? Correct, <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. And the other one is, they have to start right now. Doesn't they? Mm, doesn't es para tercera persona. Uh, don't. Don't, don't they? Don't <laughs> yeah, don't they? Okay. Correct. They have to start right now, don't they? Perfect. Those were correct. Please, yeah, please let me hear your sentences if you have them. Uh, this must be on time, mustn't it? Perfect. Mm -hmm. And the other, we have a lot of work, uh, haven't we, or don't we? Perfect. That is correct, Tizia. Thank you. Wendy, do you have your sentences? Um, he, he must get up early. Mm -hmm. Mustn't he? Very good, Wendy. And the second one, do you have it? She have a two sisters, doesn't he? Doesn't she? She have or she has, Wendy. She has. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, porque de hecho la pregunta le hizo correcto. Doesn't she? Very good, Wendy. Thank you. <laughs> Solo eso. De ahí está bien, Wendy. Thank you. Manuel, your sentences, please. Uh, my daughter must do the homework, mustn't she? Very good, uh huh? And the another one, my teacher have a good qualification, doesn't she? Very good sentences, Manuel, thank you. Um, I saw someone else, Claudia Men Melendez, please, Claudia. Mm, it must be cold outside, mustn't it? Very good. Y la mm -hmm. otra, we have to stay at home. Haven't we? Así ah, sería ahí, haven't mm -hmm. we? Yeah, haven't we? Okay. O la versión americana, don't we? Mm -hmm. Don't we? Yes. De hecho, haven't we lo sintió como extraño porque no es la que se ocupa normalmente en la versión americana. Pero it is correct. Yes. Let's go with sentences number eight and number nine. Or is it seven and eight? No, seven and eight. Seven and eight, please. <laughs> I say, okay. I say, <laughs> all right. Use pronouns for people, not proper names in question tag. Mm -hmm. Paul, Paul is a good tennis player. Isn't he? Betty has a good job. Hasn't she? Again. Use it. In a question tell when the sentence includes the word this or that. This is you can listen it. Very good, Wendy. Thank you. Okay. So listen to me, guys. I need somebody to tell me what are the subject pronouns. What are the subject pronouns? This is basic course number one, level one, people. <laughs> Subject pronouns, I, you, he, she, we, you, they. <laughs> we call them subject pronouns, <laughs> all right? So the rule is telling you, you will use pronouns for people. You will not use the proper names in the question parts, okay? okay? For example, I can say, Paul is a good tennis player. Pero en el tag no puedo usar su nombre, no puedo decir isn't Paul. Mm -mm. That's not acceptable, that doesn't exist. Betty has a good job. Hasn't Betty? No se puede, right? In the question tag, you will always, sorry, in the tag question, you will always use one of the subject pronouns. ¿Cómo sé cuál usar? Va a depender del sujeto de la oración, right? So if the subject is a man, I will use he. If it's a woman, I will use she and so on and so forth. Y así sucesivamente. Solo then, cuando, cuando uh -huh. comience con, con un nombre propio. Exactly. O cuando, okay. haya un, cuando, el sujeto, cuando el sujeto sea un nombre propio, en el tal question, voy a usar el, pro, el subject okay. pronoun. 
Okay. Okay. And then, siempre que ocupe el this o el that en una oración, a pesar de que llevo el this o el that, no lo puedo llevar en el tag. El tag siempre va a ir con it. Okay. This is your cell phone. Isn't it? A pesar de que ocupe this, el tag va a llevar it. That is my neighbor. No, that is my neighbor's house. Isn't it? Right? Okay. So those are the two rules. Es exactamente la misma. Tienen que usar subject pronouns. Solo que la número 8 les dice que para this or that siempre van a ocupar el pronoun it. Okay. So let's create two sentences. Ocupamos una donde ocupa un nombre propio en la oración y el subject pronoun que le corresponde en el tag. Y hagan una donde ocupen this or that y el tag using it. You have three minutes. Also, voy a hacer un anuncio en español en lo que ustedes están escribiendo sus oraciones. Um, Hazel Cardona les mandó ahora en el grupo, pero me pidieron que lo reiterara. Necesitan um, ah, recordar sobre la documentación a las personas correspondientes en las en siguientes instituciones. Asociación Unidad de Ecológica Salvadoreña, Ferretería Mexicana, Importaciones, Decoraciones y Comunicaciones, Laboratorios Suizos, Servicios Laborales SADCB y TETEL SADCB. A las personas que laboran en esos lugares, por favor, empiecen a pedir la documentación. El plan es que podamos iniciar el siguiente módulo lo más pronto posible para que podamos abarcar uno más en octubre, uno más en noviembre y creería que terminar los primeros días de diciembre y a lo último. ¿Ok? Para no atrasarnos. Si no, ahí nos van a ver el 20 de diciembre todavía en clases. <risa> No, I'm joking. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Aquí celebrando la Navidad. <laughs> All right. If you're ready with the sentences, let me know, please. Yo, yo tengo teacher. Okay, Manuel, let me hear them, please. Okay. Uh, Jorge, Jorge is a, George is a good actor. Isn't he? Perfect, Manuel, uh -huh. This is a beautiful city, isn't it? Perfect, that is correct, well used. Um, Anna, do you have your sentences? Yes. Okay. This is our old car, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And the other, Berta has a new house, hasn't she? Very good, Anna, correct, thank you. When did you have your sentences? Yes. Maria is, or Mary, Mary mm -hmm. is a teacher, isn't she? Perfect, Wendy, yes. This is your book, yeah, this is your book, isn't it? Very good, nice guys, you're getting it. Perfect. Let's go to number nine and number 10. <laughs> number nine and number 10, please. Me. Mm -hmm. Use they in a question tag when the sentence includes these or those. Example, those are your sandals, aren't they? 10. Use there in a question tag when the sentence includes their class A, form, or B. Example, there is a lot of work to, the, to do today, isn't there? Very good, Anna, thank you. Okay, rule number one, use they 
in the question tile specifically. Use they in the question tile when the sentence includes these or those, okay? Así como en singular, this or that, llevan el tag con it. Those, these or those, llevan el tag con they, okay? Singular, this or that, el tag es con it. Plural, these or those, el tag es con they, okay? For example, these are my glasses, aren't they? Okay, aunque empiece con these or those, el tag siempre va a ir con su object pronoun, they. Okay, and then the next sentence, Ana nos decía, si su oración lleva la combinación there, there is, there are, cualquiera de esas, el tag siempre va a terminar con there. Okay, si la oración dice there is, El tag va a ser isn't there. Si la oración dice there are, el tag va a ser aren't there. Okay. So whenever the question tag, when the sentence includes there is or there are, you know that it will end with the word there. Okay. Y este es más fácil de identificar porque si está al inicio, ustedes saben que lo llevan al final en el tag. Okay. So. Let's make the sentences with these two, please. <coughs> this or those, and I the tag they. Uh -huh. With the rule number nine, uh, it doesn't matter if I if I use it, uh, my subject is it, uh, the end of the tag question always be aren't they. Mm, number nine. Yes. For example, if I want to say those are our reports, reports is a thing. It. Mm, pero eso es lo are, lo hace plural, no puede ir con it. Uh, Tal vez si dijera that is our report. Que no me ves. Ahí sería I, I the mean, that. Uh -huh. okay. I, I mean, um, I didn't mention a person. Mm -hmm. Por yeah. ejemplo, en este, ese, ese que usted dice, entraría en la nueve de this or those, podríamos agregarle el that. Usted puede oh, decir yeah. that, como solo uno, ¿verdad? Ese es nuestro reporte. That is our report. Isn't it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Eso okay. se va en la misma colada de la regla nueve. This or those, también se va con el that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Good question, Christy. Thank you. Okay, let's make the two sentences with those two, please. We'll have two more minutes for that. Manuel, let me hear them, please. Okay, number nine. Uh, those are the new computers, aren't they? Very good. Mm -hmm. And number 10, there are many musical groups, groups in the party. Isn't there? Mm, de nuevo, repítelo. There are many musical groups in the party. Uh -huh. Is, there, qué? there are. Uh -huh. Entonces el tag es? Uh, are there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Perfect. Bueno, uh -huh. very good. <laughs> Wendy, please let me hear your sentences. I tried. Uh, those are your blouse, aren't mm. they? Blouses. No. Those are your blouses. blouses. Uh -huh. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Those are your blouses, aren't they? Mm -hmm. There is a lot of a lot of home to to do today. Isn't there? Perfect, Wendy, very good. You got it, they are correct, Wendy. Yes. Okay, just, you just you just gotta remember, um, como regla general, siempre que hablen en plural, these or those or ours or our, siempre asegúrense que pronuncien la S al final del objeto. Por ejemplo, these blouses or those blouses. Right? Solo es de agregar, asegurarnos que en plural siempre suena una S al final. All right? Jorge, do you have your sentences? Yes, teacher. 
th those shoes are beautiful, aren't they? Very good. Mm -hmm. And the other one, there are many ways to arrive at home. Aren't there? Correct. Very good, guys. You're using them all correct. And let's go with the last two sentences, the last two rules, please. Claudia? Use they in a question tag when the sentences include indefinite pronouns. Nobody, no one, someone, somebody, everyone, everybody. Example, everyone is here now, aren't they? Nobody has eaten yet. Have they? Use, yes. mm -hmm. Number 12, use didn't in a question tag when the sentences include the verb used, used to. Example, you used to go to skating very often, didn't you? Perfect. Thank you, Claudia. So we're going to use a subject pronoun they specifically in the question tag when we have indefinite pronouns. Okay, indefinite pronouns son los que hacen las oraciones negativas, que los que les hablaba ahí arriba. Que aunque no son auxiliares negativos, vuelven a una narración negativa. Por ejemplo, nobody, no one. Someone, somebody, everyone, everybody, right? Estos, someone, somebody, y everyone, no son negativos, pero son indefinite pronouns. Porque no estamos usando un nombre propio, okay? So they are indefinite pronouns. Si una oración lleva cualquiera de esos, el tag siempre va a llevar they, okay? They, for example, everyone is working online. Aren't they? Okay. Nobody has sent me the text. Have they? Right? So whenever you see one of the indefinite pronouns in a sentence, you make sure that you add the subject pronoun they in the tag. Okay? El verbo puede ser el verbo to be o cualquier otro verbo. Pero el, el subject pronoun en el tag siempre va a ser they. Para cualquiera que lleve indefinite pronouns. In number 12, we're going to use didn't, el auxiliar en pasado negativo, to make the question tag, okay? When the sentence includes the verb used to. No sé si ustedes ya vieron este tema de used to, pero básicamente solía, okay? Si la oración dice solía, yo solía, él solía, nosotros solíamos cualquiera de esos, El tag va a ir en pasado simple, okay? con el auxiliar didn't y el sujeto. Okay. I used, well, my mother used to cook every night, didn't she? My mother used to cook every night. Mi mamá solía cocinar cada noche, ¿verdad, Fulanito? Right? My mother used to cook every night, didn't she? Todas las oraciones que hablen de solía, Van a ir con el tag didn't. Y el sujeto de acuerdo al que está en la oración. Okay. Let's make those two last sentences, please. I'm going to give you three more minutes for these ones. One with aren't they or haven't they? Have they? Y una con didn't usando used. You have three minutes.
Claudia, let me hear your sentences, please. Nobody going to the party yet, aren't they? Okay. And no one has spoken, have they? Very good, Claudia. Y la otra es, we uh -huh. used to eat pizza very often, didn't we? Perfect. That is exactly the way you're supposed to use them. Very good. Um, Jorge, were you raising the hand? Uh, nobody tell me the answer. Are they? Uh, again? Nobody tell me the answer. Aren't they? A ver, a ver. Aren't, tiene que ir si va el verbo to be en la oración principal. Uh, ¿Cuál sería el auxiliar para verbos de acción si no es el verbo to be? Do. Have. Do. Do. Uh -huh. El have lo ocupamos en el taxi, está en la primera. Pero si en la primera solo es una oración en presente simple, el tal va a ir con do o con doesn't, dependiendo si es afirmativa o negativa la primera. Pero Jorge dijo, nobody... Repeat it, please. Uh -huh. Nobody tell me the answer. Uh -huh. Usted está diciendo, nadie me dice, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Nobody tells me the answer. Y entonces viene Jorge y ocupa el auxiliar, do they? Ok, do they? Do they? Uh -huh. Este específicamente is, porque aquí en esta está, en esta, everyone is here now. Por eso ocupamos el aren't they, ¿ok? En esta lleva el have o has, por eso lo ocupamos acá. Pero si no hay ninguna de esas, si es un, una oración con un verbo de acción, vamos a ocupar do o does, ¿ok? O don't o doesn't, dependiendo, ¿ok? Right? Lo único que nos dice la regla 11 es que va el subject pronoun, va a ser they. El verbo puede cambiar, en el tal, el verbo puede cambiar, pero el subject pronoun se va a quedar en siendo they. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Do, Do we they. have? Uh -huh. Do they? Nobody tells me the answer. Do they? Mm -hmm. And the next one, Jorge? Uh, I used to be faster 10 years ago, didn't I? <laughs> Very good, Jorge. That's correct. That's a good one. Tatiana Michelle, please. Yes, teacher, I wrote, uh, everyone, everyone is in class now, aren't they? Correct. Mm -hmm. And the other sentence, nobody has come to the class yet, have they? Very good. Mm -hmm. uh, you used to eat French fries, didn't you? Perfect, Tatiana, thank you. Manuel, please. You're in mute, Manuel. Okay. Everyone is invited to the meeting, aren't they? Uh huh. Okay. Nobody drunk alcohol in the party, do they? <laughs> Good, Manuel. Thank you. And the, um, the, the, the last one, uh, my mother used uh -huh. to cook uh, chicken soup, didn't she? Perfect, Manuel. Thank you. Christia, please. I don't know if if are good, but uh, for the first one I have, no one has came to work, have they? No one has come to work. Has come, okay. Mm -hmm. That is correct, have they? That is correct, Lisa. And the second one, my parents used to help me, to help me, didn't they? <laughs> good, <laughs> correct. Right, Wendy, good. please. I try. <laughs> yeah. Someone is in a workplace. 
aren't they? Uh -huh. uh, I used to go to the gym, didn't I? Perfect, Wendy, very good. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. So those are the 12 rules that you must keep in mind at, when you're speaking using tag questions, all right? Now, ideally, you will practice, the more you practice in conversation, the more you will remember, all right? So this part was important. We talked about this on Friday, but we're just gonna repeat it, all right? Rising tone. El tono de voz que yo ocupe cuando hago el tag question puede tener dos significados, right? Los dos son preguntas, sí, okay? Pero si yo ocupo un rising tone, elevo la voz un poquito cuando hago el tag question, estoy pidiendo un favor. You could lend me some money, could you? Okay, you could lend me some money, could you? I'm asking for a favor, okay? But also I can be asking for information. Dependiendo del contexto, también podría estar pidiendo información. You don't happen to know if the number 50 bus has already passed here, do you? Right? If I raise my tone at the end, I'm asking, okay? I'm looking for an answer. But if I use a falling tone, pero si bajo mi tono de voz, um, mi entonación en el tag, so no estoy pidiendo que me digan si sí o si no, solo estoy pidiendo que me confirmen, ¿ok? Solo estoy diciendo que cualquiera de las cosas que yo haya dicho acá, me la confirmen, ¿ok? For example, the boss, wasn't in a, the boss wasn't in a good mood today, was he? That dress looks great on her, doesn't it? Right? So just be sure that you use the correct tone of voice. This part, it's most important if you're going to take a test. In grammar tests, it's really important, but in daily conversation, it's basically the same, all right? So now we're gonna, we have an exercise in here. This is a multiple choice. Um, let me share the screen and you will see a multiple choice here. Let me know when you're seeing it, please. Yes. Okay. So we have 10 sentences. So I'm gonna need 10 volunteers, una para cada uno. Um, what you have to do, you will see four sen five sentences, five options, four options, sorry. You have to select the one that contains no errors. Se va a seleccionar la que esté correcta, básicamente, right? Hay cuatro oraciones en cada sección. Ustedes escojan la que está correcta, la que no tiene ningún error, all right? Remember, we need 10 people, so we need 10 hands. Levantemos la mano para poderlos asignar. Um, let's begin with Cristia. Cristia, help me with number one. Jorge with number two. Claudia with number three. Wendy with number four. Tatiana with number five, please. Ana, I'm gonna give you number six. Manuel, I'm gonna give you number seven, okay? And then we can go after, we can check after that for the ultima stress. Let's begin, Christy, please. Okay. Should the sentence which contains no errors. Um, your daughter is in Thailand at the moment, wasn't he? This meal was delicious, isn't he? Isn't it? Nobody called for me while I was in conference during day. Did they? Did they? Uh -huh. All this is too much for me to carry by by myself. Give me a hand, do you? Um. Your daughter is in Thailand at the moment, wasn't she? Do you think that is the correct one, Christian? Your daughter is in present, wasn't, is in past. Yes, this is the one. Is, is in present, wasn't, is in past. Okay. Tendría que ser isn't she para que estuviera correcta, ¿verdad? So esa de sí, es ah, la puse a pensar. <laughs> y está exactamente el mismo escenario, pero al revés, ¿verdad? Right? Mm -hmm. Um, no quedan dos opciones. 
Indefinite pronoun. ¿Qué pasa cuando tengo un indefinite pronoun? Is do or did. No es, el, no es el verbo lo importante. Es el subject pronoun. Y lo podemos ver. Si se fijan, está... No, esto es los uh, últimos, creo. Ajá, la once. They, in a question tag, when the sentence includes indefinite pronouns. Si hay un indefinite pronoun, no nos enfocamos en el verbo del tag, nos enfocamos en que lleva el day. Siempre y cuando esté correcto. <ríe> Se acorde. All right? Ok. Me okay. see the, the options. Yeah. Just let me check. Here. Ok. Ay, I, I don't know. Oh my God, you do. Acuérdese <laughs> que A y B están despertadas, Chris, así que lo tiene más fácil. Do it. I think letter letter. Ah. ¿Dónde hay un indefinite pronoun y la combinación de? Yes, the letter C, but the option is the that question is the day, and mm -hmm. the rule said is aren't they or have they? Mm -mm. No. Es lo que les mencionaba, es lo que les mencionaba, y lo voy a decir en español. Um, en la regla 11 nos dice que el pronoun es lo que nos importa. Si hay un indefinite, ajá, este verbo, el que vaya antes del pronoun, va a depender de lo que esté acá. Este puede ajá. variar. Uh -huh. Pero nos aseguramos que uno esté correcto con el de la oración, pero que el pronoun subject sea they. Siempre que haya uno indefinido, ¿verdad? Ok, de el sí. Correct, lady. Bueno, vamos a cambiar la pantalla. Un aplauso, Cristia. Yes, you see. <laughs> yeah, you Clap, did it. Nah. Perfect. Let's go with number two. Who has number two? Okay, let's hear. Just remember that in your English, I will find a lot in the last couple of times. You used to be in the first As a student, you used to work part time at a coffee shop, didn't you? You've never eaten this kind of food before, haven't you? Uh, mm -hmm. Choose the sentence, sentence which contains no errors. Mm -hmm. How many time I, I have? <laughs> How much time? You don't yeah. have time, you can check it. <laughs> but try to remember the rules. Okay, try to, la que, la que le venga ahorita a la, a la memoria cualquier regla de las que ya acabamos de ver. O podemos empezar descartando. Si usted lee la, your English have improved a lot. Para empezar, estamos hablando en tercera persona. Tendría que ser has. No yes. puede ser esta. De, de, desde ahí ya va a descartar, right? So this one, ni la veamos. Number two. You used to be in the same history classes. Me decía la regla que si va la frase used to, tiene que ir didn't. Así que esta no puede ser, ¿verdad? Tenemos dos descartados. Ok. When you used to work part-time at coffee shop. Didn't you? Uh -huh. Esa más o menos. Y veamos la última. You've never eaten this kind of food before. Haven't you? Nos dice la regla que si tengo una palabra negativa en la oración, la pregunta va a ser positiva, ¿verdad? Entonces no puede ser esta. Por descarte no puede ir una palabra negativa y tag negativo. No se puede. Entonces por descarte sería... Sí. Letter C. Tiene la combinación, ¿ve? Used to y el didn't. Y lo repasamos acá en la regla. Si lo buscamos de nuevo, nos dice, ocupe didn't en el question tag cuando la palabra ocupe used to. Okay, didn't you? Used to. All right? So that one will be letter C. Very good, yay! 
before yeah. we continue. <laughs> Applause for, for George. Yes. <laughs> Applause for everyone. <laughs> before we continue, I'm going to take the attendance. Gracias a todos por recordarme. Bear with me for a moment. Today is what well, today is Monday the third, Monday, October third. Ana Raquel Villalta. Present. Thank you. Carlos Antonio. Present. Thank you. Claudia Maria. Present teacher. Thank you. Diana Elizabeth. Present. Thank you. Jorge Humberto. Present. Thank you. Jose Jonathan. Present, Miss. Thank you. Jose Rodrigo. Juan Carlos Rivas. Juan de Dios Mejía. Present teacher. Thank you. Linda Ibe. Manuel Antonio. Present teacher. Thank you. María Concepción. Present. Thank you. María Elena. Mario Ernesto. Present teacher. Thank you, María. Present teacher. Thank you. Nelson Gabarrete. Present. Thank you. Norma Carolina. Olga, Olga Marlene. Silvia Suleima. Present. Thank you. Tatiana Michel. Present teacher. Thank you. Wendy Maribel. Thank you. And Christian Natalie. Present teacher. Thank you. Okay, we will continue with the test. <laughs> no, it's not a test, it's an exercise. Just to offer pressure. Who had number three? Can tenía la número tres? Me teacher. Okay, let's read it, please. Las leo todas. Yes. Okay, choose the sentences which contains no errors. A. It, it's cold today, so wear warm clothing. Are you? Letter B. You weren't paying attention to me. Are you? Letter C. You have never come to this park before, did you? And letter D, you couldn't recommend a good place to have a quick meal. Could you? For me, is letter D. And yes, you were correct. Si se fijan, esta regla de could no estaba dentro de las reglas que acabamos de ver. Pero Claudia, Claudia por asociación, comprendió que esto va dentro de las de si es negativa la oración. El tag es positivo y viceversa. Muy bien, Claudia. <laughs> you go. Number four, please. No vino. What? <laughs> Qué bárbaro, yo viendo. <laughs> yo ni puedo hablar de mí, yo siquiera. <laughs> Todavía no puede adelantarse. Me <laughs> definiendo ya con... Eso puede ser trampas. Wendy, please. Ay, supongo que... Suponemos nada, Wendy, leamos. Leamos, pues. Desde la primera. Desde la primera. This uh -huh. job makes us really tired. Uh -huh. ¿Sí? ¿Qué? Ajá. Esa me sonó que estaba buena, pero no lleva un it, sino que lleva un make. Entonces no fue. No, Wendy, no es ese el problema. Uh -huh. No. Makes. No. Makes es un verbo de acción. Uh -huh. El tag no puede ser el verbo to be. Ah, por eso, por eso descartado. Uh -huh, por eso está descartado. Okay, he showed, showed not, no, 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 Nothing can go, bro. Can it? Esta descartada de entrada, porque vamos una palabra negativa con auxiliar negativo. Eso no existe, eso no se puede. Así que descartada. Solo Me tiene la B y la C, Wendy. Me suena la B. Ok. Very good, Wendy. <laughs> nice. Gracias, Diosito. <laughs> Very good, Wendy. Number five. ¿Quién tenía el número cinco? Mi teacher. Okay, let's hear you. Uh, these gloves don't belong to you, don't they? 
uh, there was some confusion about who will do what. Isn't there, isn't this? Uh, those are new glazes, are they? They always look happy together, don't they? Uh, the answer is number C, or letter C. That is incorrect. Yeah. <laughs> they always have it to kill. Yep. That is the right one. <laughs> yes. Uh. They always look happy together. Look es un verbo de acción. Lleva el tag con el auxiliar positivo. Simple present. Don't. They. Okay. Right? No. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Let's go with number six. Who has number six? Hi. Okay. Uh, you haven't finished reading that novel yet, haven't you? No. Um, mm -mm. You get to bring your wallet, did you? You like to listen to classical music, aren't you? It's your turn to take the dog for a walk, doesn't it? For me, it's B. And you are correct. <laughs> yes, that's the one that made sentence. Didn't auxiliary affirmative. Very good. Tag affirmative. Number seven, please. Me, teacher. Uh -huh. That's a new pair of boots, are they? We can pick up a carton of milk on the way home. Can we? This pie looks delicious, isn't it? It's making my mouth water. Nobody is absent today, aren't they? Okay. Number A, no es. B, we can pick up a carton of milk. Can we be tampoco? Por qué no? see. Uh, we can. Ah, uh, we can pick pick up. Uh, let me see number C. This pie looks. This pie looks. Uh, let us see. The nobody is absent today. Are they? Se cumple la regla porque está en negativo. Letter B. Letter B. Letter B. Can B. Can we? Correct. Tenemos auxiliar afirmativo. Está mm -hmm. va en negativo. Right. De los demás ya no no pega las oraciones. Yes, exactly. Aquí dice a. For you. A new yes. pair. Lo hace singular. No puede ir el tag en plural. Right. Very good. Acá no está ni siquiera usando un question mark, así que mm -hmm. no una tag question. Y aquí lleva negativo con afirmativo y luego negativo de nuevo. So no se puede. Ok. So, very good, Manuel. Ya mire. Y lo digo solito. We have number, number eight and number. We have three more, but we're not going to use them. We're going to leave them there. Very good, everyone. <laughs> nice job. Ok, listen. We're going to check the student's manual right now. We're gonna go to the student's manual and we're gonna check page 28. On page 28, we have a building vocabulary exercise. You're going to match the terms to the corresponding meanings, okay? So for example, a question entered into a web search engine. What would that be? A question entered into a web search engine. So we have Five, five words and five sentences. I'm gonna give you guys six minutes to cross them, okay? To match them. Le voy a dar seis minutos para que les hagan match y luego podemos revisarlos. We have six minutes. Also, if you finish first, let me know and we can start with you.
No. Mio. ¿De qué? Okay, for the ones who have finished already, let's raise your hand and we can check the answers, okay? Let's begin with Manuel, please read the first one. You're in mute, Manuel. Sorry, sorry, mm -hmm. search engine. I consider a, a question enter into a well search engine. Mm, okay, Algo. who else agrees with Manuel? Can, who agrees or who disagrees with Manuel? A question, a pregunta. system that you want to search to find. Manuel says, Manuel says that search engine is a question enter into a web search engine. Who agrees or who disagrees? I disagree. I disagree. Okay. I disagree. Which one? Search engine, in your opinion, Diana? A software system that is designed to search the, for information on the World Wide Web. Correct. Search engine, motor de búsqueda, right? So that would be something that can use a www. Also, una pista también, query. Query nos da la pauta para question. It's basically the same thing. Okay? Okay. So number two, let's, who wants to read number two? Web traffic. Volunteers for number two? Me, teacher. Okay, let's read it, please. Web traffic, uh, the amount of data Send and receive by visitors to a website. Okay, sent or received. Yes, that is correct. I agree. Does anybody disagree? No. I agree. All right. Perfect. Let's go with number three. Um, Claudia, if you could help me reading number three, please. Claudia. Number three. Claudia, are you there? Claudia Melendez. You're in mute, Claudia. All right. If, if she's not available, Diana, could you help us with, num with number three, please? Yes. Search query. A question enter into a web search engine. Correct. Very good. Number four, landing page. Anna, help us with number four, please. Uh, any web page that a visitor can arrive at or land on. All right, yes, that any visitor can arrive at or land on. Exactly, that's the landing page, right? And number five, SERP, search engine result page. Who has that one? Bueno, by default, seria? Yeah. The, the listing. Of the listing of results are returned by the search engine in response to a keyword query. 
Very good. That is correct, everyone. Nice job. Yay. Okay. Do you guys know what is needed? If you were, well, let me first ask this question. Do we have a web designer here in the class? Or do we have a, or do we have a marketing person here in the class? Do we have a community manager here in the class? <laughs> I don't think we have, right? So listen, what are, yeah. the, what are the important qualities or what are the things that we're looking for when we are trying to hire a web designer or a community manager person, right? What do we need to look for, all right? So here's what you're going to do. You're going to create a conversation. You're gonna work in the breakout rooms and you're going to create a conversation in which you discuss, you are the human resources of your company, okay? As a hell scenario, you are human resources in your company and you are discussing what things you are looking for in the new web designer person that you need in the company or in the new community manager that you need in the company, right? What do you need from that person? What they have to know, what they have to do, what, what are the responsibilities? So what is the knowledge that they have to know to have, right? All those details. It has to be a conversation between human resources people, right? You guys are those people. So we're gonna start, we're gonna open the rooms and you can Google it, okay? Pueden buscar cosas como what to look for in a community manager, what to look for in a web designer, okay? Y de ahí se pueden guiar para ir haciendo la conversación. Es una reunión entre recursos humanos discutiendo qué van a pedir, qué van a buscar en la nueva persona que quieran contratar, all right? Everybody has to participate. Okay, it's a conversation, so every member of the group has to participate. Si queda en un grupo donde su compañero no entra, me dejan saber, levanten la mano, piden asistencia y me dejan saber. The rooms are open and you will have 10 minutes. Las salas están abiertas, pueden ingresar, tienen 10 minutos. Hello, teacher. Hi. I'm arriving at home. <laughs> All right. Do you want to enter in one of the breakout rooms or not yet? One? No, no. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to okay. prepare, prepare my dinner. All right, then. Don't worry, then. Thank you for letting us know one. <laughs> Enjoy. Thank, thank you, teacher.
Okay, we should all be back by now. Let me just check before with you guys. Has everyone finished the task or do you need a few more minutes to complete it? We need a moment for more few minutes, please, teacher. No, yet. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to give you guys five more minutes until 51. All right, the break rooms are open so you can go back as soon as possible so you can finish. Nelson tiene que reingresar a la sala con Tatiana y Claudia. Mario, no sé si lo dejó. No lo dejó reingresar. No. Vale, lo voy a mover, pero no lo acepta todavía, pero. Ya le voy a avisar más. Ahora ya le regresé el 5. Ok, gracias. Uh -huh. Wendy, what happened? Estaba con María Elena, pero ya luego creo que la sacó, nunca la escuché. Y luego me sacó a mí. Ah, ok. Bueno, entonces ni modo, igual ya solo faltan dos minutos para que regresen los demás, Wendy, si está ahí, mientras tanto. Uh -huh. Alguien puso algo en el WhatsApp, ¿verdad? La noche aquí. De Juan Carlos Rivas, creo. Juan Carlos Rivas. Ay, no podría estar porque estoy en una vela. Juan Carlos. Ah, ok. Thank you, Wendy, for letting me know. Ok, teacher.
just 15 more seconds before everybody comes back. Okay, we should all be back by now. Let's begin, let's hear room number one. In room number one, we have Ana Raquel um, and Silvia Zulema, please. Okay. Silvia, I saw the fan page of our enterprise and there are many questions of customers and I don't have time to answer. What can we do? Hi, it's necessary hire a community manager. Mm, where can we hire one? Uh, what skills are we looking for? Mm, the person wants to know about social media, uh, target market, an uh, individual who builds, grow, and manage online communities. Oh, it's an ex excellent idea. It's urgent post they just offer. Okay, this person will help us grow. Finished. Very good, ladies. Anna and Sylvia, you did a very good job. <laughs> you created the scenario. Anna and Sylvia followed up with information. Very good, ladies. <laughs> Great job. Thank you. Let's hear room number two, room number, no, room number three, sorry. We have Claudia Melendez and Tatiana Michel. No sé si estaban trabajando con Nelson también, creo. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay. 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 Uh, Se me fue. <laughs> Qué raro. <laughs> okay. Um, Hello team, we are in this meeting be today because we have to look for a new community manager for this month. Remember, we are looking for a person with a bachelor degree and have at least two years of experience. Okay, Claudia, I think this person needs to have a long experience for in some skills. For example, beyond interpersonal skills, uh, the best community managers are actively researching trends and hot topics uh, by engaging with the latest in industry developments. Uh, the community manager. <laughs> the community managers are better able to connect with relevant audience and provide the and provide them with the most updated resources. And remember the average salary is 80, 800, is about 800 and this person have to have to have the same chief, for example. And after that is, it was the Nelson. Nelson. <laughs> <Sorry. Yes. laughs> okay, don't worry ladies. Actually, what did you were in a meeting, you were discussing what the new person is going to do. So very good, you deliver exactly what we needed. So thank you ladies for participating. Good job. Then we're going to hear room number five, Diana, Manuel and Mario, please. Okay, teacher. Welcome, Manuel. Very nice to meet you. Thank you so much for coming to this interview. Tell me a little bit about you and about your web designer profile. Okay, Diana. Uh, thank you for uh, the opportunity uh, for this uh, position. I consider uh, I am the person uh, that I that you are look that that you that you are looking for. Uh, let me introduce myself. 
I, I am web designer. I create and call internet sites and web pages. Uh, I combine text with sounds, picture, graphics, and video clips. Uh, I create in the design and layout of a website or web page. Uh, I working on brand new website or updating an already exciting site. That's really interesting. Right now, Can our community, <laughs> right now our community manager is going to explain you a little bit about the functions of the position. Ah, okay. Well, Manuel, you are very qualified for the position. We are required in, in this job. Uh, we, you can you can manage all the social accounts. For example, Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram. So you can, you have a lot of experience about that. So we, we you take an account. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I need this position as soon as possible. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, Marie. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Thank you, very good job. <laughs> Guys, you were really good. You were very fluent. It really sounded like a job interview. So very good job. Thank you. And last but not least, but not least, we have from number seven, Cristia and Jorge, please. Okay. Hello, Cristia. How are you? Hello, Jorge. I'm looking for a new web designer. Which is the profile you're looking for? Uh, let me tell you some qualities that I need. We're looking for a person who knows English, community, community social media, creative with patience, and good spelling. You're very lucky, Christian. My friend John is available, and he has all those qualities that you mentioned before. Perfect, Jorge. Could you give me the cell phone number, please? Yes. Christian, the number is 555-333. Fine, thank you. Bye, George. Jorge. <laughs> That's it, teacher. Very good. <laughs> I, I really like that every one of you had a different approach to the activity. Cada uno de ustedes, cada grupo puso un acercamiento diferente de la actividad. So very good job, Jorge Christian. That was very fluent. <laughs> it was very, very <laughs> conversational. So thank you, everyone who participated. All right, that's going to be it for tonight. We're just going to take attendance for the last time tonight. Ana Raquel Villalta? Present. Thank you. Carlos Antonio Escobar? Present. Thank you. Claudia Maria Melendez? Present. Thank you. Diana Elizabeth? Here, teacher. Thank you. Jorge Humberto? Present, teacher. Thank you. Jose Jonathan? Jose Rodrigo? Juan Carlos Rivas? Oh, Juan Carlos no iba a poder estar. Um, Juan de Dios Mejía. Present, teacher. Thank you. Linda y Ben. Manuel Antonio. Present, teacher. Thank you. María Concepción. María Elena. Present, teacher. Thank you. Mario Ernesto. Present, teacher. Thank you, Nelson Gabarrete. Norma Carolina. Olga Marleni. Silvia Suleima. Present teacher. Thank you, Tatiana Michel. Present teacher. Thank you, Wendy Maribel. Present teacher. Thank you, Christian Natalie. Present teacher. Thank you. Okay, as a reminder, como recordatorio, um, los que no lo han hecho, empiecen a arreglar la, el papeleo o a recordarles a, sus, a los encargados en sus empresas que presenten el nuevo papeleo para iniciar el siguiente módulo lo más pronto posible, ¿de acuerdo? Also, esta semana tenemos que completar hasta la unidad 3, y por esta semana me refiero hasta mañana martes. <ríe> Del miércoles hasta el otro martes tienen que terminar la, semana, la unidad 4, ¿ok? Idealmente... Yo les aconsejaría que terminen la unidad 4 el día viernes. Así yo dejo sus notas ya subidas el pinde. Y el lunes solo vienen a practicar. Martes a hacer el examen final. Y con eso terminamos. Ok. I will okay. see you tomorrow. Traten de conectarse lo más temprano posible. 
vuelvo y repito, lo que les sea posible. Y los veo el día de mañana. Descansen. Have a good night, everyone. Bye. 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 Unidad 3 tendría que estar terminada mañana, Claudia. Unidad 4 tienen hasta el otro martes, pero idealmente yo les recomiendo que le terminen para el viernes. Así yo dejo sus notas ya subidas el fin de. Y el lunes solo se ocupan de hacer el, la práctica y el martes el examen final. O sea que esta es la última semana. Sí, el martes, el otro martes terminamos por los dos días que perdimos de la vacación, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Ah, va. ¿Está bien? Yes. Gracias. Buenas noches. Gracias, pues sí, igual. Thanks. Thank you. Nelson, the class is over. Oh, sorry, teacher. Tuve problemas de conexión. Se me saca cada rato. Ok, no hay problema. Pero sí, al final hizo la clase, Nelson. Tenga feliz noche. Cuídese. Ok, gracias. Ya se termina.